So, if you've watched my, any of my videos, really, well, with the exception of a few, you've probably noticed that I do enjoy using RID Steel Jaw as a size comparison. But, I've recently made the decision that I'm going to change that. So, he's no longer going to be the go to size comparison for vehicles. So, I figured as an honor, as in honor of his memory, to uh, kind of put this thing to rest. I'm going to review them. Now, that does not mean I'm going to stop entirely. I'm going to do it for some select RID guys, but for most of the time, it's... The new guy is, uh... He's going to be RID... Not RID. Titan's Return Blur. But for now, we're going to take a look at Steel John. This is his ton of shine. God, it's been forever since I used this thing. So, Steel John is a little blue... Presumably 4x4 truck. Of sorts. It's more of a racing variety in it, really, because I don't know any work killing a vehicle in like this. It's mostly just some uh, kind of bluish gray kind of color, a little uh, not bluish gray. It's some kind of uh, weird blue color, and it is somewhat metallic, so I guess like steely blue. But it's not entirely that. We got some red sections here on the, um, uh, the I don't know. I have no idea what this part of the vehicle is. I'm not a car guy. We have uh, some black for the windshield. And we'll discuss that. In the front, we have black for the front bumper slash grill, which the grill is not painted, oddly enough. Well, in any kind of other identifying color to make it look like a grill. And he's got orange headlights. There is a little mold line there to the, um, uh, for identifying the headlight and the tail light, but other than that, it's all orange. The back has nothing. Another unique detail is, I'm not sure how well you can see it because my camera quality is uh, kind of garbage and the lighting is not that good, but there is actually a Decepticon symbol that has three claw marks on it, which if you've seen R.I.D., you'll know that all of the Decepticons in Steel Jaws pack, he, oh, that's out of focus. He would take their um, uh, Decepticons and with their transmitter for um, their beacon, so they can track, so the Autobots can track down the Decepticons and recapture them. He scratched them out so that way they couldn't track them, and that was their identifying feature. Their Decepticon symbol were scratched. I find that a unique detail. And then you have the. Um, uh, Decepticon scanner symbol. Because of transformation, uh, his windshield is going to end up as a chest. Transformation spoilers. Ooh. So, the geniuses that Hasbro decided, oh, it's going to be a good idea to put it on his chest, even if it does form a very important part of the vehicle. Uh, I don't know how it works over there, over in Hasbro, but come on, this. It's on the freaking windshield. <laughs> like, I know Decepticons don't care about law, human laws and whatsoever, but having a, a big obstruction on your windshield, I'm fairly certain that's illegal. Meh, who cares. He does have, um, some... He's got some uh, meaty little tires, so he actually does get quite good grip, despite them being the dreaded mushroom pig thing. They roll surprisingly well, which I do like that. For accessories, he comes with this not Wolverine claw. Holy crap, that's reflective. Um, yeah. yeah, as you can tell, this looks a lot like Wolverine. I mean, it's even got the freaking handle guard right here that looks so much like Wolverine's actual outfit. And then you have the metal claw sticking out, kind of like uh, it's like that. And they even have the little blade thing right there that Wolverine has on his claws. So. Yeah, for weapon storage in the vehicle mode, there is a slot right here in the roof, and there is a tab on the claw. So what you do, you take that tab, plug it in the slot, basic science, boom. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how blades on the top of your truck is really going to do anything, especially since, you know, they're not sticking out past anything. Uh, I'm okay with it because it looks somewhat like a roof rack, so... Funny enough, it's vehicle integration. 
So, for size comparison, here he is next to Titan's Return Blur. Maybe the second time this guy's actually been scaled with him. Uh, this probably was a bad decision, you already know how these guys scale if you've seen Blur's video, but if you haven't. Uh, this looks unreasonably in scale. I think a racing truck would be a lot shorter than, or taller and shorter than a super sleek, uh, futuristic hover sports car. And here he is next to Bisc, which I think I've also compared, so this is kind of useless, but, eh, taking a trip down memory lane. Yeah, these guys go well. So, now that we've gone through scaling and weapons and paint and all the vehicle details, I mean, I do mold details, but what's there to talk about? There's nothing, really. On to transformation. Transformation on this guy is pretty simple for kids, you know, already. Uh, first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna come to the whole front of the vehicle, and this is my favorite part of the transformation. You're gonna unhook this section right here, because the hand, it plugs into this little circle right there. You're gonna rotate the thigh, then you're going to fold part of the hood down, and it will friction lock into place, so, yeah, it'll stay right there. And you do that over here, and it's a very nice, fluid motion. It's a unique transformation thing I've never seen anywhere else. If I can get this guy to stand properly, there we go. Raise the camera. Hello, finger. We are then going to take the tail, flip this. Oh, you, you can't see that at all. Brilliant. You're going to take the tail right here. You're going to flip out the tip. Rotate it around, and then you're going to move it down. You have to do this, or else you won't be able to get the arms out of their spot. There will not be enough clearance to do so. Cooperate, cooperate. Thank you. Cannot believe I'm talking to toys. Then you're going to pull the sides of the vehicle out. And then we're going to rotate this down. There's a little notch right here that this will latch over. Then you're going to move this forward, which will line these sections up to tab into the chest, broadening the windshield. You're going to fold this panel back, and you're going to extend the arms, fold the windshields over. They don't peg into place, or, or windows over. You know, fold those over his arms. They don't peg in place anywhere. They just rest there, relying on friction, which is stupid. But... Here we have him, there is Steeljaw in his robot mode, and my Primus can you not stand. There he is. Now, this was my first R.I.D. figure, because at the time, and even to this day, I'm still trying to get the Decepticons, because despite being a Decepticon fanboy, I still have mostly Autobots in my collection. So... When I saw him being the first Decepticon in the wave of R.I.D., I thought, eh, he'd be a good choice, and I liked him for the first day, first few days, and I still kind of do. I really do like him, but he has been probably one of the worst figures in R.I.D. to this point in the warrior range, because a lot of people argue that I'm a uh, one-step changers and all the, uh, you know, kid appeal toys, you know, simple to transform and all that stuff. Even more simpler than these. But I really like what this guy is trying to do. Getting in the head sculpt, uh, this is one of the inaccuracies. Cause this, this head had to have been made before the animation model got made. Because if you've seen the show, Steeljaw, while he does have a wolf-like face, it, surprisingly it looks a lot like cartoon iterations of Wolverine. And he, he's, he's got somewhat of a wolf-like face, but it's more flat. It's more like half-human, half-wolf. This guy is just all wolf. He's got the snout, he's got the snarl, he's got the pseudo-mane and the little ears poking up. Silver paint, yellow eyes, he's got little mold teeth. He is snarling. He's got some, like, mold lines and eyebrows going up. He's got just, uh, some detail in the ears. And, uh, yeah, that's... That's it for the head. The only new paint revealed, we got some extensions on the windshield, because 
these are separate pieces that plug in and they brought in the windshield out. And that was all out of focus, my bad. But that is a really cool transformation trick. And I've already stated how much I like the legs. We got some black and kneecaps and then a really fat middle toe and two smaller toes, so yeah, that doesn't look healthy. But that's about it really. Um he can hold his weapon, his hands are five millimeter compatible. And I really do like the way this looks, because the hand, the guard covers up the hand, and it makes it look like his hand has morphed into a claw. Many people complain that they want two, and I mean, you could just buy another one, but you'd have to hold it upside down. You kind of lose that effect, because you see his hand. But, I mean, if you do want two, have him hold it like an actual weapon, and not just like his hand transformed into a claw. You can plug it in there, underslung style. And, while this does look okay, it's not my preferred storage method. <sighs> so, size comparison. Here you see the blur. Blur is obviously taller. And, uh, here you see the bisque. He's taller than bisque. Now, you've probably noticed... And you've probably seen it throughout a lot of my reviews. He does not like to stand. And this is why. You see his feet? You see how they're curved? How they have like a little slightly rounded slope? Okay, I'm I'm no expert in math. I'm probably one of the worst people to consult for math. But it is basic knowledge that a rounded surface is the worst thing to stand something on. You always put it on a flat surface. The idiots had the audacity to think, oh, this is a good idea. He won't need any extra heel support. He's got a tail. But this tail doesn't do well on the smooth surfaces. You need a surface with a lot of friction, or you need to position the tail exactly the correct way. Which makes him standing him uh, on wood or glass or heck, even this. Which is, you know, it's it's rough, pla it, well, not rough, but it, it's got a lot of friction to it. It's, I mean, it's got rough, bumpy edges, and even he's still having some issues trying to hold, hold uh, a pose. But speaking of pose, let's get into articulation. Head is on a swivel. I mean, you can see the mushroom peg right there. That does not look healthy. Which is nice and all, but it raises his head slightly upwards when you turn it. Or not upwards, he leaves his head at a diagonal angle when you turn it, so he's always looking quizzical. Or if you got him in the right position, very menacing. Which is nice and all, but a little bit disappointing. And he's got that thing like Blur does, the anti universal joint, where it moves like this and this. And not getting full universal movement, but he has it even worse because. You see this little notch right there? This prevents him from getting all the way forward. So, it's pointing in the same direction as his snout. He's got a bicep swivel. That's some nice uh, little spring detailing in the hollow parts. But then you got this. And, and then you got the elbows, which are ratcheted, but... Ooh, that does not feel pleasant. Like, it's got detents, yes, but if you want to make it not do that snapping thing, you got to pull this out a little and then move it. Because if you don't, yeah, you do that. And it really worries me, because this stuff, it, it tends to flex and twist, and I just really don't like it, and then you got to do this, and, oh, man, look, look, here's this normal, ooh. It really, and, yeah, and then this doesn't lock in. But, oh, my God, that is, it's terrifying to do that. I really don't want to have to move his elbows all that often. And if you're wondering about this rough area, that was when me and my friend were hitting him with a katana. It's also the same day my katana broke. I'm a liable. He's got a hint at the base of the tail, and then a ball joint here, and the ball joint there. Which would be nice and all, because it, gi it, it, it gives him a lot of motion in the tail, but 90% of the time you got to have the tail on the ground so he can stand. He's got ball jointed hips, but they don't have a lot of outward range, and you gotta keep them like this all the time to get maximum balance, so. Yeah, the hips and the outward movement are pretty much useless. Bicep swivel, I'm wearing that spring detailing. He's got one knee here, to get decent range, and then I guess technically you got the transformation joint. I've seen a lot of people keep the legs out of the friction 
click, which does give him a little bit better stability. But I'm one to keep it in pure transformation. Okay. This does actually increase his ability quite a lot because I, I just got him standing without the help of his tail. See? I did. I didn't. See that? His tail. It's not touching. <sighs> but that's about it for our ID Steel Joe. He's a decent figure, but he's got a lot of flaws, and I want to love him, but there's just so many things going against him. Way to go, man. Way to go. Hold on for a minute. Ah, much better. So, this is 953, doing a, a, a review to fill in the gap videos, and the page tribute to my former size comparison, I salute thee, Steeljaw. I salute thee. And good luck to Blur until I find a replacement for him one day. Make me proud, buddy.